When you want to add tests to your slides and trainings, you can do that from two different locations. The first one being here in the plus for new slide. When you click on it, you have the option to add a new test. The second one is from here when you add a new test directly. When you click on that button, you will have to start filling up the basic information for the test. It has a few steps in the process, so let's do it together. You fill in the test name, then a description. You decide if it's going to be visible in the content index or not. You decide if it's going to be in a module or out of the modules. For example, we can set it at the end of module 1 or module 2, depending on the location you prefer it to be. But if it's out of the modules, it will be after them. In case you decide it to be in module 2, it could be in a topic that's contained in the module. So let's choose topic 2 the position after a specific slide or in the beginning or in the end let's leave it in the end by default and you choose the transition entry effect in this case fade you can continue to the next step when you are ready here you add the questions for the test you can create a new question or add from the bank with questions in this case, we are going to add a new question. You select the type of question, single choice, multiple choice or true and false. We create a single choice question. Write in the name, the short name for the question. Select how many points this question will give when answered correctly and also the time students would need in seconds. So, for example, 120 seconds. The category of the question, you can select different categories for that question to be placed in, and then you write the question itself. You can also bold, italicize, underline or edit the size and color of the question. You can also add media by dragging and dropping a file on top of this field or adding an attachment by using the see more button. Then you go to the phase for the answers, you select and fill in the different possible answers as well as you are able to select which one is the right answer. For example, we are going to make answer 2 the correct one and as you can see the percent for it is now a hundred percent so this is the only right answer and it gives a hundred percent of the points you can also fill in feedback for the answers so that students and learners can have a feedback if they get a wrong answer or if they get the correct one And when ready, you click on save. And now you have the question added. It shows the type, the name, the category, the awarded points that you can change from here directly. The time in seconds, which you can also edit or make different. A button to move the question and change the order of the questions and a drop-down menu to edit or remove the question. Now, if we are 
ready with the questions, we would go to the next step, evaluation. Here you have the settings for time limit, if there is any. It's by default, it's no. So if you click on yes, you would have to set how many minutes should the test be. For example, we can say it's 10 minutes long. Then automatic test submission. If yes, the test will be submitted automatically when it's complete. If no, users have to confirm sending the test. You can also choose the passing method, but as you can see, those settings are not available at this moment. So if we remove the time limit for the questions, they will become available because it's um, available to have consistent with a question lock after answering, meaning that users cannot go back in the questions they already answered and they cannot change their answer. Or you can make it free so that users can go back into the questions, change their answer if they think they should do so. Another setting is question by question submission, meaning that when a user answers and gives response, they will have submitted the question and they are not able to to go back and change the answer. After that, you have the allowed number of attempts for the test and how many times a user can try and attempt the test. For example, let's set it to three. Which score should be considered the last attempt or the highest attempt and so on. Result for successful attempt, that's how many percent would the user need to pass the test? Let's make it 70. Then the sequence settings of the questions, should they be user defined and in the order that's placed on the question tab? Or should the system randomize them? As well as sequence of responses, should the the system randomize or keep the user defined settings here then we continue to the next step which is the messages which are after the end of the test when passing successfully or when the test is failed You can also change the settings like bolding or italicizing the text as well as changing the size of the messages so that they are more visible. And then you go to the last step which is visibility of the results for the students. And here you can determine which part of the student's performance should be visible to them. You have the opportunity to choose different elements for different phases in test development. You have three sections here. After the answer, what should the user see? Their marked options for the completion. If the answer is correct or not, the correct answer points gained for the question, points gained for each action, and feedback for every question. After the users submit the test, you can also select which of the options can be viewed and reviewed by the learners, like marked options if the answer is correct, but also we have points gained for the whole test and feedback for the whole test. It's always a good idea to complete your feedbacks in each individual question and also for the whole test. 
And the third section is after the expiration of the deadline, which is the time limit and the period the test is available in scheduled courses. And again, you should select which of the components should be visible to the learners and students. You can also configure the completion time in the Contipsu LMS module or in your courses and trainings after selecting the already configured test. And when ready, click on the save button. The test has been added into the structure of your training. It shows the number of questions, the completion time, the number of attempts, the result formation should be from the last attempt, and the minimum passing score is set at 70%. You have information for attempts and automatic submission to, so that the users are aware of any stipulations or any conditions that they should know of about the test. When you want to try the test out, you can click on the button start the test and this is how it would look like. You have the question and the possible answers. As you remember, we set answer 2 to be the right one. You can click on answer so that you can confirm your submission. And here, if there were other questions, you could go between them with the previous and next buttons. On this part, you will see how many questions there are and they will be shown as numbers and you can select them or if they are set to be one by one, you will not be able to go to questions ahead. Here you have the total time, the points which are locked and not visible for this question. So let's click on answer and the test should be submitted. Now you see that we have the message that we set. Great, you passed the test. You have the final result, five points, 100%, the minimum score and the results formation. You have start a new attempt or to preview the attempt so that you can review any information about correct answers or the components you have selected for the user to be visible after completion. Here in the corner of the answer, you can click on the feedback, feedback icon so that you can see the feedback for each of the responses. In case they are wrong, you can give advice or tips. Or in case they are correct, you can give some other information or confirmation to the user. When you have done reviewing your entry, you click close, go back to the final result and continue with your training.